previously on Elements of Justice. Fair's been planning some kind of story from the very beginning. Sugar Stamp and Private Eye, somehow they're also a part of it. I managed to test the blood that Apollo, Trucy, and I found on the trees the other day. It belonged to Royal Order. You remember the remaining suit of armor? I managed to find it. I noticed that the left side of the body plate had a particularly ugly dent in it. Whatever happens in this trial, help my mom, no matter the cost. Sweetie Belle was neither the one to make the tourniquet, nor the one to get the healing potion from Zakora. Some pony else did both. Silver Spoon! But when Sylvie came into my bedroom with the magazine, I saw that she had a small patch on her coat that was stained red. The defense believes that the pony who broke into Carousel Boutique was none other than Silver Spoon! Now that we have confirmed all of this, we now know the true identity of the pony who sent that anonymous tip. That can only be Sweetie Belle herself. The fact of the matter is that this clone never existed in the first place. The breathing Scootaloo thought she heard coming from Royal Order, it must have come from some pony else. You mean, who killed Royal Order? There's only one pony who could have, and that's the son of the victim himself. Turning page! That's enough. Your Honor, my son didn't kill my husband. I did. The truth is out in the open now. And all that's left to shield it? is one final testimony from Miss Devotion. My husband teleported us to Froggy Bottom Bog to search for our son. Finding nothing, we decided to travel up the path to the crossroads, then afterwards to the Nightmare Knight statue. During our search, we began to talk about turning page, it was a difficult topic, one that erupted into a bit of an argument. Things got out of hoof, and in a blind rage, I ended up knocking Royal Order into the base of the statue, killing him instantly. After realizing he was dead, I did what I needed to do in order to cover up the crime. Hmm. I see. And this, then, is what you claim to be what truly happened that night. How your husband was killed. That's right, Your Honor. So it would seem. But tell me this, Miss Devotion. You say you did what you needed to do in order to cover up the crime. But why did you move the body and lead us on this wild goose chase? That's easy enough to answer. I wanted to make it look like Royal's death was an accident. That Timberwolves had killed him, not a pony. I knew that his death, once it was discovered, would be regarded with... Great suspicion. Great suspicion? Of course. He was a member of the Royal Guard, after all. And, well, on track to greater things. Greater things? Does she mean... To further complicate matters, the fact that he died on the base of the statue meant it would be hard to make it seem like Timberwolves had killed him. So, I needed to remove any possibility of him dying in any other way. The most immediate way to do that was by getting rid of the body altogether. My initial thought was to sink it into Froggy Bottom Bog, but I had to remove his armor first. Once it was off, I carried him away with my magic. However, Doing so left that blood trail, the one found at the crossroads, behind, leading back to the statue. That explains why Royal didn't have any armor on him when Scootaloo ran into him later. In any event, while moving the body, I heard a clang coming from the statue area. I immediately left the body at the crossroads and rushed back. I didn't find any pony, but I was worried. The fact that there was a clang meant some pony had been at the scene. I was also worried because I could hear Timberwolves fast approaching. The scent of the blood must have attracted them to the area then. There was no time to waste. I used my magic to lift the blood on the statue, as well as the armor, and brought them to the clearing through the trees. Huh? Why both? As the Timberwolves were in the area, I hoped that they'd lap up the blood if I left it in the clearing for them to find. 
I also hoped that they'd maybe gnaw on the armor. Thereby leaving traces of their presence at the scene, further corroborating the story you were concocting. Exactly. I figured that it'd be an easy enough story to believe. Murder doesn't occur in Equestria, but accidents? Those are easier for us to digest. That explains the armor. But was it just the chest plate you took into the clearing? No, I also took the helmet, but I didn't leave it at the clearing. I chose to carry it with me so I could dispose of it later. Why would you want to dispose of it? Because of the hole on the side, right where royal order had been impaled. If any investigator found that helmet and that hole, they'd be able to dismantle my story. So you finished setting up the parameters for this story. What did you do afterwards? Well, after I left the Timberwolves to their... feast, I returned to the statue to make sure I didn't leave anything behind. Then I headed back to the crossroads to retrieve Royal Order's body. But... But what? The body... it... was missing. Vanished, somehow. Vanished? Didn't you find that... odd? Of course I did! I'm not a fool, Miss Sykes. But, at the time, I thought perhaps my luck had changed, that the Timberwolves really had eaten the body, even though I hadn't seen any wolves yet. Still, it has been bothering me. And up until now, I didn't know how the body could have vanished. Up until now? It should be obvious, shouldn't it? That body couldn't have moved on its own. No, some pony else must have moved it. And that pony was Sugar Stamp. Sh Sugar Stamp? How can you say that? Actually, Princess Twilight, I don't have to say that. You and your partner already did it for me. We did? <laughs> that male pony, Sugar Stamp, she had a badge with a similar shape as the mark on the wagon. Oh, man. You know what this means, right? Yeah, that male pony was in the forest that night. Time is up, Defense. You've had enough time to discuss. Have you concluded who may have left the mark on the wagon? The defense has identified a possible suspect, Your Honor. And who might they be? The defense... ...formally accuses the male pony by the name of Sugar Stamp. You said it yourself. That mark proves Sugar Stamp moved the body to the castle ruins. But I don't think she did so just to frame Turning Page or Scootaloo. Then why? Why would she move it? Earlier, Sugar Stamp said she'd been in the forest. Now, I hadn't seen her at all, but she surely must have seen me. She must have also seen what happened at the statue. You mean, she witnessed you killing Royal Order? That would be the most probable explanation. After seeing that, she would have wanted to protect me. So, while I was otherwise occupied at the clearing, Sugar Stamp took Royal's body and dumped it at the castle ruins. As for why there, well, you pointed out one possibility, Miss Sykes. She was trying to pin the murder on Turning Page and Scootaloo, and make the ruins look like the real crime scene. But I think there's another possibility. If she had seen the blackmail exchange, and the ponies involved, she could have been trying to pin the blame on maybe Diamond Tiara, or Silver Spoon. <sighs> but that isn't for me to speculate on. In any event, I believe Sugar Stamp was trying to protect her friend. And that's why she decided to provide a false confession, with help from Detective Private Eye. I see. And for Private Eye to have helped her, then, that must mean he was also trying to protect you. I believe so. Royal was his friend. Perhaps Private Eye felt that he had to do justice by him, for me. What about the bruises that we found on Turning Page? 
They still place him at the crossroads where Scootaloo crashed. Right. And Silverspoon and Zakora's testimonies can't account for his whereabouts after he fled the castle. The bruises are the only things that we have that can explain where he went. You can't just dismiss them, Fair Devotion. I suppose I cannot. But I'll keep to my word. Something you ought to learn, Miss Sykes. <laughs> Though those bruises place him at the crossroads, they in no way demonstrate any involvement Turning might have had with his father's death. For all we know, sometime during that night, while fleeing, he might have teleported to the crossroads in an attempt to get out of the forest quicker. He is a gifted unicorn, after all, just like his father. He'd have seen the body before Sugar had moved it. At the same time, he might have heard Scootaloo coming, and then propped himself next to the body. The crash occurred, Scootaloo ran off, the bruises formed, and after a time, Turning managed to flee the forest too. All without having anything to do with what happened to Royal Order. If that's the case, then Turning Page, why haven't you said anything until now? It's as I said before, Princess Twilight. Royal Order taught his son the importance of taking responsibility, even for things he has no control over. He kept silent, then, in order to protect me. The court appreciates you clarifying matters for us, witness. Now then. Normally, this would be when the cross-examination would occur. However... You feel as though it, along with Miss Devotion's further comments, have answered many of our questions, and that a cross-examination would be nothing more than a formality, changing nothing. Correct, Your Honor? Indeed. I can think of no discrepancies within it that a cross-examination would reveal. Honestly, me neither, Athena. Fair Devotion's words add up. Sure, her words do. But I think that you and I have noticed that it's not all these words that matter in a testimony. It's also the witness's heart, their emotions. Then that means you must have heard some discord in her heart? Unmistakably. And I'll bet anything that, if we can figure out why it's there, we'll be able to unearth the truth. Which means... Another therapy session. That's right. Your Honor! The defense requests that instead of a usual cross-examination, we conduct a therapy session in its place. A therapy session, you say? Well, I have no qualms about that. Prosecutor Luna, do you? We do not object to this idea, Your Honor. If the defense wishes to do so, so be it. Yes! Thank, Thank you, you Prosecutor, Prosecutor Luna. Luna. All right, then. In that case... Hold it! Ugh. If that's the sort of look teachers give when they're about to scold you, I think I might have dodged a bullet with all those days off. Miss Fair Devotion, what's wrong? Your Honor, Prosecutor Luna! Surely, after everything you've witnessed, you cannot seriously permit Miss Sykes to continue this charade. Ch charade What are you talking about? That naivete, that ignorance, that is what I mean. Miss Devotion, I believe it would benefit all of us if you would refrain from being coy. <sighs> Fine. Then allow me to explain myself. Miss Sykes, why did you take this case? Why? I... Uh, I, mean, I mean, I did it because I wanted to defend Scootaloo and Turning Page. Indeed. And how have you gone about defending them? Let me offer you a fresh reminder. The first course of action you undertook was accusing Zakora. A ludicrous claim, to be sure. One backed not by evidence, but by conjecture. You were perfectly willing to besmirch Zakora's good name if it meant you could save Turning Page and Scootaloo. I... 
I know, but... Following that, you turned to an even more fantastic avenue of explanation, boldly claiming that there were clones involved. I yes, but we just proved that there weren't any clones that night. And that's my point. I your point? You made one assertion in the previous trial. Then at the end, you made a completely different one. And here we are, rolling our eyes at you changing your mind yet again. Sakura is the killer. Oh, sorry, she isn't actually. My mistake, your honor. There are clones involved. Um, now that I think about it, that's not true at all, is it? Sorry, Prosecutor Luna. You've changed your entire stance so many times that I'm not sure you even know what you are trying to do. Uh, uh, hang on! Yet, as if that wasn't enough, you began this case with the intention of defending my son. And now it would appear you intend on closing it by doing the exact opposite! Accusing him of killing his own father! Why? Uh, why? B because it... It's because it'd be the most convenient for you. Mr. Voshan, what are you saying? Let me put it plainly, Your Honor. Miss Sykes promised she would defend my son. Now, she isn't. She has, in fact, made many promises throughout this trial, only to renee every single one. Each time you change your argument, it was to pursue whatever narrative would, conveniently, make it look like you knew exactly what you were doing. I have half the mind to think that you went into this case not to defend my son, but in order to prove yourself as a lawyer. Well, you've proven something, all right. You've proven you'll stubbornly stick to your own theories, your own misguided notions, all in order to make yourself look capable. Even if it means going back on your word. But let me tell you something, Miss Sykes. Any pony who does not stand by their word is not worth the time of day. Fair devotion! Miss Devotion, that is enough! Is it? Then let me ask you this, Prosecutor Luna. Do you honestly believe what Miss Sykes is now claiming? That Turning Page killed his own father? Can you honestly take that at face value? Given her previous actions? It... It is a most distressing theory. One that is... difficult to swallow. That may be quite the understatement coming from you. And you, Princess Twilight. Me? You're our princess of friendship, aren't you? Tell me, would a friend, a true friend, go as far as to accuse the pony she vowed to save? Twilight. What about those in the gallery? Those who have been watching this trial since the very beginning? You've seen exactly what I've seen, heard exactly what I've heard! Surely you cannot ignore how dubious Miss Sykes appears? She's no lawyer by any measure, nor a psychologist. She's merely a child, blindly chasing equally blind ambition with no regard to how they'll affect those around her. Isn't it time we stop pretending to think she's anything but? Mare's right. That human has to the club too many times. And then she's accusing that poor cult. How despicable. She's just a hypocrite. How could anyone do such a thing? It's... it's unheard of. Order! Order! Miss Devotion, I do believe you've said quite enough. I will not permit more slander in my courtroom. Otherwise, I will hold you in contempt. I understand, Your Honor. That was everything I needed to say anyway. Let it be so for the time being, then. Miss Sykes, I do believe... Oh, uh, Miss Sykes? What am I doing? I can't let Fair's words get to me. And yet, and yet, I know that she's right.
The only pony who could have killed Royal Order was his son! Turning page! <sighs> Amazing how at one moment those words could sound so certain. And then in the next, they sound only empty and hollow. I can't deny it. It was my arrogance, my hubris, my relentless unwillingness to look at the greater picture that led us to today, to accusing Turning Page, to going back on my promise to him. And now, not even those who I thought were on my side can stand by me. Prosecutor Luna, you believed in Turning and Scootaloo's innocence. You trusted that I would prove it to the court. I can't even begin to wonder how you're feeling. How betrayed you must be. Would a thousand apologies across a thousand nights ever make things right? And you, Twilight! You, who said you'd stand by my side to the very end. Was this what you had in mind? The two of us facing the consequences of my actions yet again. All this pain, the suffering. Because I couldn't face the truth until it was staring me right in the face. Leaving us with... What exactly? If we accept what Fair's saying, if we accept her lie, then while turning will be free, Fair will be banished forever, leaving him alone. But if we reject the lie in favor of the truth, that he was the one who killed his father, won't that be just as bad? Fair will be let go, but turning... I... Can I ask you to do something, Miss Sykes? Hmm? Whatever happens in this trial, please, help my mom. No matter the cost. This must be what you were referring to. You knew your mom would pull something like this, but you don't want her to take the blame for you. Private Eye and Sugar Stamp, you both look scared, too. But you must know that it's the truth that turned and killed his father. You must know. And equally, you must not know what to do about it. And you, fair devotion, you look confident. You think you can do this, can take the blame for your husband's murder all in order to protect your son. But your heart and the discord in it, they're telling me otherwise. You're hurting having to do this. Everyone, Twilight, Luna, Fair Devotion, Private Eye, Sugar Stamp, Turning Page, Scootaloo, me. Everyone is hurting because of this case. <laughs> there isn't a single good outcome. Whatever I do next, it's going to result in us losing something. But what am I willing to lose? <sighs> is that the question, though? Is that what I need to answer? Or is that what just landed me here in the first place? In the first trial, I wasn't willing to lose. Losing would have meant Scootaloo and Turning would be found guilty. And it would have meant that I wasn't a capable enough lawyer. That led to me accusing Zakora, then believing clones were involved. All because I thought this was about winning and losing. But is it? Is being a lawyer about winning the case every time? No, of course not. That's why I ended up accusing Turning Page. Being a lawyer isn't about shouting objections. It's not about pointing fingers or slamming desks. It's not about winning a case with a fancy display of logic and reasoning. If it was all that, I wouldn't have been a lawyer in the first place. No. I became a lawyer because... Want to know something? I didn't even want to be a lawyer when I was a kid. Really? Yeah. The main reason why I studied law and psychology in the first place was because I wanted to save a dear friend. He was accused and convicted of murdering my mother when I was younger, and I studied as hard as I could so I could free him. I didn't become a lawyer because I wanted to win. I became a lawyer because I wanted to save someone. And in saving them, I wanted to save and show to the world the truth I always knew existed. Have... have I always known that? Oh, maybe I have. But that doesn't matter. Trials and courtrooms, 
lawyers and clients, innocence or guilt, it's not about what you're willing to lose. It's about what you're willing to save. Hmm? What's that look on your face, Miss Sykes? Everything you said about me, Fair Devotion, is correct. I am naive. I am reckless. And I have, consistently, changed my stance throughout this case. And I recognize that that makes me look hopelessly lost, like I have no idea what I'm doing. Maybe I don't. Maybe... Maybe half the time, it feels like I'm stumbling in the dark, fumbling for a switch. And the moment I find it and flip it on, it becomes apparent that how this trial has progressed, with all of its twists and turns, is mostly my fault. I accept and admit that much. Is that so? Well, I am glad you at least have the maturity to take some measure of responsibility. Yes. But even so, though I accept that I've made many mistakes, I refuse to let that stop me. You refuse? It doesn't matter what you think of me, Fair Devotion, if you really do consider me nothing but a child. It doesn't matter if the gallery or court agree. What matters is that I resolve to continue down this path I've started us on. In pursuit of the one and only truth, no matter what you or any pony else has to say about me. Uh, Athena? I see. Then that must mean you understand what I've said is the truth? Far from it. Excuse me? I know you want us to accept that it is the truth, Miss Devotion. And I know why you need it to be. But I can tell you from personal experience, Taking the blame for someone else's crime is a short-term solution that can only end in tragedy later down the line. And that may be fine to you, but it's not fine to me. It wasn't then, and it won't be now or ever again! W what In that case, Miss Sykes, what will your next course of action be? If you don't mind, Your Honor, I'd actually like to discuss that with my co-counsel before I say anything else. Very well. Though, please be quick about it. All right. Hopefully that's convinced Fair that I'm not backing down any longer. That just leaves... Twilight. Huh? Y yeah, Athena? Fair's words must have shaken her up quite badly. Okay. I need to be clear about this. I want to be upfront about this. I'm going to push for using the mood matrix on Fair's testimony, but... I want to know what you want to do. What I want? Why me? Because we're a team. Everything we've gone through, the good and the bad, every mistake, every triumph, we share that responsibility. I know that right now, you're feeling scared about that responsibility. I understand. You... You may be a little uncertain as to if you can keep trusting me. No! Never! Even if that is the case, I want you to know, I fully believe that using the Mood Matrix will lead to the best outcome. But if something goes wrong, and if there are consequences to this, it won't be just you facing them. It'll be me as well. In good times and in bad, I promise you, I'll share those burdens, no matter what. But I don't want to push you to take on this task with me if you don't want to. That's why I'm asking what you want to do. And if you want us to do something else, we'll do that together too. You're certain that using the Mood Matrix is the best course of action? Positive. No matter what Fear Devotion thinks. Or maybe it'd be more accurate to say it's precisely because of what she thinks. Then I'm game. Let's do it, Athena. And whatever happens next, happens next. Thank you, Twilight. Defense? The court would like to have your answer. Your Honor, the defense stands by its request to conduct a therapy session with Miss Devotion. What? That's absurd. After everything you've done, why should I be subjected to such treatment? Objection! Witness, it may be true that the defense's position has been flawed since the beginning of this case. Be that as it may, 
The position is irrelevant in the matters of the courtroom. Evidence is what counts. And the evidence the defense has put forth at the very least shows that there is more going on here than what you claim. To that end, the prosecution wholeheartedly supports the defense's motion. The court agrees. F fine I suppose I can tolerate these antics a little longer. Miss Sykes, you may begin your therapy session when you are ready. You got it, Your Honor. Wow, I'm still so impressed with this technology, Athena. It's amazing. <laughs> That's my mother for you. She and the engineer she worked with were a great team. And it's thanks to them that we have the ability to clear up this testimony. That's... a lot of noise, though. Yeah, I expected as much. Miss Devotion is desperately trying to keep everything under wraps. But we can't let that stop us. And we won't. Time to kiss this noise goodbye! <laughs> My husband teleported us to Froggy Bottom Bog to search for our son. Finding nothing, we decided to travel up the path to the crossroads, then afterwards to the Nightmare Knight statue. During our search, we began to talk about turning page. It was a difficult topic, one that erupted into a bit of an argument. Got it! Miss Devotion, this argument you had, it must have gotten you very angry. <laughs> Obviously. And yet, I couldn't help but notice you sounded sad and shocked, along with being angry. Is there any reason why that comes to mind? None whatsoever. Your little toy must be wrong. I distinctly recall being angry and nothing else. That was admittedly a long shot. Especially since she's trying to cover everything up. Still, I wonder... What even incited the argument in the first place? I know she said that they didn't find anything, but what if they did? And what if it led them to talking about turning page? At any rate, you say you were angry with royal order? Beyond angry. Furious, in fact. To the point that I didn't even have to think when I kicked him into the statue. Kicked? Him? That's odd. If you kicked him hard enough for him to be impaled at the statue's base, then how do you explain this? Th that's Royal's armor! Indeed. But surely, looking at it, you can see why I need an explanation for what we found on it. Ugh. Uh, forgive me, Miss Sykes. Could you explain to the court what you mean? Gladly, Your Honor. Look at the left side. Do you see that dent? I do. Does that dent look like it was made by a set of hooves? Um, uh, hmm. No. It looks more like something somewhat rectangular struck it. Exactly, Your Honor. Something rectangular. Meaning the dent could not have come from some pony kicking the armor, as Miss Devotion has just claimed. Hmm. That's right. But then, how do you explain the dent? If Miss Devotion can't, I think I can. Based on what the Mood Matrix revealed, and how I've already claimed that turning is the real culprit, then the object which formed this dent in the armor must have been... Take that! Turning's own wooden sword! That's just not possible! Turning wasn't anywhere near the Nightmare Knight statue. Plus, he had his sword with him the whole night, remember? He certainly had it when he attacked Diamond Tiara. More than that, though. Let me finish for you, Miss Devotion. You're about to say that afterwards, Turning couldn't have used his sword. Is that right? Why do you say that, Miss Sykes? Because, Your Honor, Turning's sword broke when he hit Diamond Tiara during the blackmail exchange. It broke! Exactly my point! 
Even if Turning was near the statue, he could not have used his sword to attack royal order. That would appear to be the case, sure. But that becomes entirely irrelevant when we consider a couple of factors. Irrelevant? <laughs> right. Turning Page is a unicorn. You just admitted to us that he can teleport. So... He could have used his magic to teleport to the statue at some point, bringing his sword with him. And more than that, he also could have used his magic to hold the pieces of his sword together. If he teleported there after he attacked Dam and Tiara, he could still have used the sword to attack Royal Order. It would have been just as effective in two pieces held together by magic as it would have been whole. But teleporting to the statue would have required that he knew where the statue was. What proof is there that he'd ever been there? That's easy. He would have gone there many times, thanks to a certain Nightmare Night tradition. It's for Nightmare Night. It's a holiday where fillies and cults go from house to house collecting candy. And then, at the end of the night, we all come here and give up some of our candy so that Nightmare Moon will gobble us up. Since that tradition involves bringing candy to the statue, it's not unreasonable to think that, at some point, Turning would have visited it during the holiday. Ugh. Your Honor, the defense requests that the dent in the armor be tested against the sword. I believe it will show that the two are a perfect match. I'd also like to pause the current therapy session until this test is done. Is that okay? Granted, and yes, that's fine by me. Prosecutor Luna? I see no problem with either of these requests. Very well. Bailiff? Make haste with this test. Bailiff, what do the results say? It's as the defense claimed, Your Honor. The sword does match the shape of the dead found on the left side of the armor. Miss Devotion, do you have an explanation for this? Fine, I concede. That sword, it was found at the statue. In fact, it was what started the argument in the first place. If it was at the statue, then that must mean Turning Page had indeed gone there that night. Turning? Uh huh? Yes, Miss Sykes? Before we continue with your mother's therapy session, I need to ask you something. Could you elaborate on what happened at the statue exactly? Yeah, sure. After Scootaloo and I left the blackmail deal, I wanted to get ahead of her, to make sure she'd be okay. So, I thought I'd try and teleport. But the problem was, I didn't know a lot of places in the forest. There was the bog, but that would have meant more time walking. So you chose to teleport to the statue? Uh-huh. I figured that, even if I had to walk back along the path to catch up to Scootaloo, it'd still be faster than running the whole way. But, when I teleported to the statue, I heard voices coming. I recognized them. They were mom and dad's. And they were coming way too quickly for me to charge another teleport. So, I ducked behind the statue to hide from them. But, I forgot to take my sword with me. It was too late to grab it. I heard them come, and when they saw my sword, they began to argue. Is this... Oh no. No, 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 no. Please, no! Fair? What is it? His sword, Royal. I found his sword. You know he'd never leave it behind. Unless, unless... Whoa, hang on a second. I'm sure... I'm, I'm sure nothing bad's happened to him. Nothing bad? Are you serious? We're in the Everfree Forest. Nothing good happens here! Turning's a tough kid. He wouldn't let himself fall victim to some forest monster. Wouldn't let himself. Do you hear yourself, Royal? If anything happened to Turning, it'd be your fault and you know it! It's my fault? What are you talking about? Oh, don't you play innocent with me! It's your fault for insisting that you do all your training with him in the Celestia Forsaken Forest! If you hadn't done that- If I hadn't done that, then Turning would not be ready to join the guard when the time comes. He's a child, Royal! Stars above! How can you be so blind to that? I I'm not blind to that. Furthermore, do you have any idea how your training has been affecting him? Do you have any idea what he's done? He's got some reckless hero complex now, and I do mean reckless! 
Earlier, he attacked Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon. You remember them, don't you? Or at least their parents? <sighs> I do. Then you shouldn't be surprised to know that just before you came home, that snobby spoiled rich ransomed us for all our savings. In order to pay for the dresses, our son ruined! I had to cancel our Hearts and Hooves dinner just to start saving up enough money to pay her off. A dinner, may I remind you, that had been planned for a while? I... I just want to help Turning pursue his dream. Ugh, pursue his dream, sure. And how exactly are you doing that? Being away from home all the time, not disciplining Turning when you are around? You're making it sound like I'm the only one who should be disciplining him. You're his mother. A mother whom he doesn't listen to. A mother whom he won't give even a moment's consideration. All because she wants him to attend school. That kind of mother? Even so, fair. You know why I've had to work away from home more this past year. I can't just ignore my duties, especially not now of all times. So you choose your job over your own family? That's not fair, fair. It's not that simple much as I'd like it to be. <sighs> this is exactly why Turning needs to be disciplined more, so that he can understand what it means to have more responsibility. Mom and Dad continue to argue. They just kept getting angrier and angrier, until- Until I took the sword that was lying at the scene and struck Royal Order in the side. That resulted in him being knocked into the statue, and then dying. Turning. I want to hear what happened after the argument in your own words, without your mother interrupting you. Shoot. He's climbed up again. How can I convince him to talk? Pestering him won't change the facts, Miss Sykes. It is exactly as I have said it to be. I attacked Royal Order and killed him using Turning's sword. Nothing else needs to be explained. Objection! Nothing, you say? Then what about the fact that Turning was later found behind the victim on the crossroads? That is entirely inconsequential to this trial. I'll say it again. This trial is to determine Sweetie Belle's guilt or innocence. My confession proves the latter. This trial has gone on long enough with you attempting to take our focus off of that. I demand that this comes to an end, here and now. I'm afraid you cannot determine that for us, Miss Devotion. The court will decide that when we believe it is most appropriate. You also seem to have forgotten that we are still technically in the middle of your therapy session, witness. Oh, so I'm just witness to you now. Miss Sykes chose to interrupt it to both request an analysis and hear from your son. However, said therapy session was not brought to its conclusion and thus must continue. That doesn't matter at this point. OBJECTION! To you, perhaps not. The same cannot be said for myself and the defense, though. Am I correct, Miss Sykes? Completely. Therefore, witness, you will do this therapy session, and you will do it post-haste. There will be no more delays. I... <coughs> F fine Let's get this pointless exercise out of the way, then. An argument between Royal Order and myself broke out because we found Turning Sword at the statue. In a blind rage, I used that sword to hit my husband, causing him to fall over into the statue, eliciting a clang. You're saying when you hit your husband, he made a clanging sound on impact? Yes. What about it? I noticed that, while you were saying that, your anger and sadness subsided a little. Meanwhile, your shock remained just as intense. Why is that? Clearly, it's because I was reacting to knocking royal order into the statue. I didn't think I had it in me, nor was it something I intended. I don't buy that. That clang has got to be the source of why she was so shocked. Why else would that be the strongest emotion here? 
But if that's the case, then why would she be shocked if it wasn't because she hid her husband? Maybe... Maybe it was because she didn't think she'd hear the clang in the first place? Because she was somewhere where... She wouldn't have thought there'd be any. In other words, she wasn't on the scene when it sounded. And if that's the case... You appear troubled by the witness's last statement, Miss Sykes. Have you some kind of rebuttal? In a manner of speaking? Yes, Prosecutor Luna. When Miss Devotion heard the clang, I don't think she was actually at the statue. I think that, after the fight, she might have run off. I see. Then her reaction... For her to be as shocked as she was when she heard it, that clang must have been extremely loud. It would have surprised her, and she would have rushed back to the scene to find out what had happened. In other words, Miss Devotion didn't make the clang by hitting her husband. Something else did. And this thing, what would it be? It could only be turning page. While Fair was away, he would have come out from behind the statue, encountering his father there. He then used his magic to temporarily fix his sword and swing it into royal order, knocking him into the statue and creating that indentation. That's an awful lot of speculation, Defense. I recognize that. But it'd be easy enough for us to clear up if we simply ask turning to... Objection! You want to ask my son to support whatever you claim your little gadget there is saying? Uh... Yeah? And what makes you think I would let him do that? Or that any pony should let you ask him to do that? Isn't there a chance that the data is already skewed in your favor? Witness? What do you mean? Your Honor, what Miss Sykes has said can't be remotely trusted. Her evidence that Turning Page knocked royal order into a statue comes from what exactly? The idea that I was shocked by the clang? Shocked because apparently I was somewhere else when I heard it? And that evidence comes from a program which only Miss Sykes can access and control. She can tell it whatever she wants it to say. Knowing that, how can any pony trust what she claims that gadget says? How do we know she isn't just obscuring the facts with her device? Now hang on a second! That's not at all accurate! Isn't it? Then let me ask you this. Who else is able to use that device? Uh... Well, it, it, it'd just be me. Really? Just you? No pony else? Not your co-counsel? Not the prosecution? Not the judge? N no Then you see my point. So long as the sole party able to operate that thing you wear around your neck remains you, then the court should be under no obligation to take you at your word. After all, why should any pony trust some pony who weaves a web of knowledge only they can access? <laughs> She has a point. In the previous trial, only that human could use that weird smiley thingamajig. And she used it in order to get her client declared innocent. Does that mean she's capable of using it to declare another pony guilty? Here's really pulling out all the stops here, just to keep me from pushing forward. It's uncanny. She's definitely far more cunning than I gave her credit for. And with her son on the line. But I won't shirk from this, no matter how much she pushes me. Even if you have your reservations about the Mood Matrix, Miss Devotion, I still stand by its usefulness in court, and I know I'm not alone. My co-counsel, Princess Twilight, and Prosecutor Luna have both seen what this device can do, and his honor has as well. If you can't trust me with it, then surely you can trust them. Who I put my trust in is irrelevant, Miss Sykes. What matters is that you have at your disposal something which cannot be scrutinized by the rest of us, not without a certain blindness. A court, in good faith, cannot accept such blatantly biased tools and techniques if it is to conduct itself in accordance with its very principles. But it isn't blatantly biased. The Moon Matrix reflects the emotions of those I use it on. It's merely showing the court what you're truly feeling. 
Showing us isn't proving it to us. If you want to prove that I felt shocked for the reasons you said, you cannot just say it's because of what you saw or heard on that... that thing. Give us evidence. Real, tangible, concrete evidence. But I'm willing to bet you can't do that. Uh, she's right again. There isn't really anything concrete I can use to prove my theory. After all, there's nothing I can show that proves who hit royal order. All we know for certain is that some pony did, with that sword. But it could equally have been fair or turning. Oh, well, I might not be able to do that now, but... Why don't we ask some pony else? D twilight What do you mean by that? I mean, well, if the issue is that we ourselves don't know what exactly happened at the statue, we should ask some pony who says they witnessed it first hoof. Of course! Let's ask Sugar Stamp! Me? me? Miss Stamp, earlier, Miss Devotion claimed that you saw what had happened at the statue. Can you tell us what exactly you witnessed then? I, I don't want... I, I mean... Diva, I... she... It's fine, Sugar Stamp. You need to tell her. You know you have to. She's... letting her? Mm, th then yeah, I... I saw it. Saw what, exactly? I... I saw... I saw Fair hit Royal Order with that sword! What? That, that, that can't be right! Sugar Stamp, please! You can't lie to us! She's not lying, Miss Sykes. You can't expect me to believe! Please! Just don't! Stop it already! What? S Sugar Stamp? Why are you doing this, Miss Sykes? I just want to protect my family! The family I have left! <laughs> Why can't you just see that? I... <sighs> Die that I! Me? What is it now? I... Just think about what you've been hearing. You have to know it's a lie! There must be something you can add to help me prove that! Something you can testify to! An explanation you can give! Anything! I... I'm sorry, Miss Sykes. What Miss Devotion claims to have happened, happened. Mm, then, Sweetie Belle, what about... Mm, no! Athena! This can't be the end. There's got to be another way out of this. There's got to be! But if none of them will help me... But maybe... Maybe the last one... Maybe he'll... T turn the page! B what? Haven't you badgered my son enough for one trial, Miss Sykes? Listen to me, Turning, please! You remember what you told me? In the lobby before today's trial? Huh? What he told you? I can't do that on my own. Not without your help. But you've got to speak up and tell us what really happened. Even if it looks like things will end badly. That's enough, Miss Sykes! Your Honor, I want the defense held in contempt of court for the sheer ludicrousness of their behavior! I thought I killed my own mother turning! Athena! M miss Sykes? What did you- But instead of me getting the guilty verdict, someone, someone very close to me, took the blame, even though both he and I knew he didn't really kill her. For years? I've had to live with that guilt, feeling as it wormed its way into my very being and destroyed any sense of self-worth I had. It took me years to find a way to stop that from happening. But can you imagine that? Years upon years, wave upon wave of crushing guilt, with no end in sight, unwilling and unable to face the reality of what had happened. That's gonna happen to you, Turning? That guilt will eat you up without mercy and spit you out a shell of your former self. It'll destroy you. Like a 
very nearly destroyed me. But unlike me, who didn't have a chance to prevent that from happening, you have that chance. You can stop the cycle of pain. You can prevent more lies, more half-truths, more guilt. Whatever happened, it took your father from you. But whatever happens now, don't let it take your soul too. Please, Turning, don't do this for me. Do this for your father, for your mother, for Scootaloo, for every pony you hold dear. Athena. D don't listen to her turning. She she's just trying to trick you. Miss Sykes. Scootaloo. That, well, what's that? It's a ribbon. I got it from Rainbow Dash a while ago. It's supposed to represent the courage one has to do something awesome for yourself and your friends. It's from Miss Dash? Well, I can't take this from you then. And besides, with the way you're trembling, it sounds like you're going to need it. No, I want you to have it. But why? Well, as thanks for earlier today and for standing by my side now for one. But more importantly, I want you to have it so that you don't forget that while you're in there, to have the courage to keep moving forward. To me, you represent everything that Ribbon stands for. So as long as you don't forget it, I'll be fine standing by your side. Okay, Miss Sykes. <laughs> Turning? You're right. Only I have the power to stop this from continuing. And knowing that, I should wield that power responsibly. And now, now I choose to use that power to help you. Turning, no! Everything you said, Miss Sykes, about what happened that night, about how my father died, about who swung the sword, it's true. Bear! Bear! Wait! Don't run off! Oh, pony feathers. Goddess, preserve me. What was I thinking? Fair's been going through so much while I've been gone. She has every right to be upset with me. But is she right? Is Turning's behavior the result of my actions? If that's the case, should I stop altogether? Cede my position, come home, raise him properly? Ugh. <sighs> I feel like not even Private Eye would know what to do here. And that stallion's the smartest guy I know. Ugh. T Dad? T turning page? Hold it! M Mom? Mr. Voshan, what are you doing? D don't listen to him, Your Honor. He he's just confused. Confused and trying to protect his mother. He doesn't know what he's saying. <laughs> That's not That's another word, young Colt. I appreciate you trying to protect me, but you don't need to. Objection! Miss Devotion, you need to let your son speak. You can't keep skirting around the truth like this. C can't I? There's no truth here. It's just a bunch of messed up memories of that night. None of it is real. It is real, Witness. You must come to terms with that. Your husband, Royal Order, died. That is indisputable. The culprit- D Don't tell me you've fallen for this delusion. You're the one living a delusion, fair devotion. But it is time that you come out of it. No! I'm not the one in the wrong here. Everybody else is. 
my son didn't kill royal order. I did. No matter how many times you asked me to explain myself, that remains unchanged. Uh, Athena, look at the mood matrix. <laughs> Not this again. What's going on? It's Miss Devotion. Her emotions are out of control. She's overloading the mood matrix. What are we supposed to do? The only thing we can do, pinpoint whatever's truly causing Vera's emotional rampage. You've given me a brilliant idea, Miss Devotion. Oh, what do you want? You say that no matter how many times we ask you to explain yourself, you'll stand by what you claim? Then fine, I'll take you up on that. Tess, I mean, add this to your testimony. Explain yourself. Explain everything. Everything about the murder of royal order. Fine! Twilight, we're going to have to play things a little differently on this one. I don't think we have a chance to just calm Miss Devotion down, and we're far past the point of going back to her earlier testimony. Then what? We finish this. In one attempt, we probe the overloaded emotion and find the opening we need to shut Miss Devotion down for good at the same time. This is the last move we can make. Then let's make it count. Right. Allons-y! I'm the one who killed Royal Order! Sugar Stamp moved the body to shift the blame onto herself. Private Eye did the same. He pinned the crime on Sugar Stamp in an effort to help me. And even my own son! He saw me kill Royal, and now he's trying to take the blame for my sake. You have to believe me! They're only protecting the one who actually killed Royal Order! Got it. Twilight, that was it! This is... It looks like Sugar Stamp, Private Eye, and Turning Page. Right. But that's not what we're probing. The root cause of Fair Devotion's sadness is Turning Page himself. Here's the kicker, though. Did you hear what she just said? That they're protecting the one who actually killed Royal Order, right? Exactly. Sugar Stamp and Private Eye are easy enough to explain. Right. They provided false evidence and testimony, which Fair is saying was done in order to protect her. But if Turning Page is the one who really killed his father, then the real reason for why those two would have lied to the court... Would have been in order to protect Turning Page. But the scope of it... The knowledge required... They couldn't have done this with just the two of them. No. They would have needed some pony to wrangle all the parts of the plan together. And I have a good feeling that some pony was Fair Devotion. Fair Devotion... Think about it. She wants to protect her son. Now, considering then, how close Sugar Stamp and Private Eye were to the entire family, Fair wouldn't have had a hard time convincing them to help for turning sake. And now, she's completely distraught over what she's made them do. Even so, that's going to be difficult to prove. I don't have any evidence on hand, and we've gone as far as we can with testimonies. It'll have to come from some pony other than Fair Devotion, and it'll need to be definitive enough to not require any further questioning. And that will have to be Turning Page. But there's no way Fair Devotion would let that happen. She'd sooner die than implicate her own son. Not to mention that the alternative would be... Banishment. Maybe not. Twilight, how close is Equestria's judicial system to ours, down to the legal codes and procedures? I'd say it's a near-exact replica. Why? If that's the case, then... There's something important that applies here. A clause of sorts. That states a defendant cannot be prosecuted and found guilty for the same crime twice. It's called the Double Jeopardy Clause. Double Jeopardy? So you mean, even if Turning Page was to be found guilty of killing his father, he couldn't be banished? Th that's great! Hold it! Fair devotion? I can hear you over there, you know. You think I haven't heard about Double Jeopardy? She's... Wait. 
She's calmed down. Her sadness isn't out of control anymore. And now she's just... mad. Not that I'm surprised. Are you listening? Do you really think Double Jeopardy matters in the slightest? It does. If Turning were to confess to killing his father, he wouldn't be punished for the crime. Punished not, maybe, in the court of law, but in the court of public opinion? You might as well hand him the elements to banish himself to the sun. He'll be forever branded as the cult who killed his father, and the cult who got away with it. There's no justice in that, only cruelty! Objection! How is the alternative any better? You'd get banished, Miss Devotion, and then what? What'll happen to Turning Page? There'll be no mother to look after him. No father to raise him. Your two accomplices, Sugar Stamp and Private Eye, they wouldn't be able to help either. On account of the two of them also being punished. In other words, if you continue to do this, Turning Page will be left all alone with no one to care for him. All alone? There's always a chance a family would be willing to adopt. How much of a chance, though? You said it yourself. Turning will forever be tarnished by the accusation that he killed his father. Which was your fault if you hadn't accused him in the first place. It doesn't matter if it's my fault or yours. The fact is, with the way things have played out, Turning will be hurt by this. By both my actions and yours. I am willing to admit what I have done will irrevocably hurt Turning. That will haunt me for years to come. But you being banished won't help him either. It'll weigh on his mind for all his years to come too. All we can do now is let Turning show everyone that despite what he did, he's not a bad pony. That he's willing to confess to accept whatever punishment must come. At least that way, against the stigma of public perception, he'll stand out as some pony who's willing to take responsibility for his actions. As some pony who faces and owns his mistakes, instead of running from them. Faces and owns his mistakes. Please, all of you. I know you all have been trying to protect him. You may even think you're obligated to. But it wouldn't be right in the end. Justice doesn't come from accepting a comfortable lie. It comes from accepting the truth, pursuing it, and setting it free. Diva. Sh sugar stamp? It's time. We... we tried our best, but Athena's right. We can't back away from this anymore. You you can't be serious! She's right, Miss Devotion. W what Private Eye, you too? I understand what you did. What you had us do. It was all in order to protect your son from the truth. But I do not think that this is what Royal Order would have wanted for his family. Look at your son. He knows that this is the right thing to do. And it is. Enough lies have been woven. Enough pain. Enough grief. To last a lifetime. Let's not add to them, Diva. Let's... Let's stop hurting ourselves. Once and for all. For, for royal, royal order, order and, and for, for turning, turning page. page. I... I... Mom? Turning? It's okay. I knew since that night that this was bound to happen. And I'm okay with that. I'm not afraid. Thank you for trying to protect me. But it's time that you come clean now. It's time to face the truth. I... I... Oh. 
Oh, God, has this saved me? I just wanted to protect my son. And I failed. I failed. Royal, how can you ever forgive me? Turning? Dad, what are you doing here? We... We were looking for you. Are you alright? Are you hurt? Yeah, I'm fine. What were you and Mom arguing about? You heard that? Uh, well, never you mind. Turning, what exactly are you doing in the Everfree Forest this hour? Your mother and I were so worried. Sorry, Dad. But it's kind of a long story. You see, a... A very good friend of mine got into some trouble with these two fillies, Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon. Trouble? What kind of trouble? They... They'd stolen some of her stuff, and they were blackmailing her so that she'd get them something they wanted in exchange. They arranged to meet in the forest by the castle ruins to conduct the exchange. My friend came to me for help, and I agreed. So, I went with her to make sure that she didn't get hurt. And to make sure the deal went smoothly. You came out here without an adult? Well, yeah. I couldn't just let her go off on her own. Besides, I wanted to teach those blackmailers a lesson. A lesson? Right. A lesson. It's like you've always taught me. Evildoers beware, or taste the might of my sword! I'd say those fillies got a good taste of it, alright. Uh, your sword... it's broken. Yeah, I guess I swung it a little too hard. Oh well, nothing that a bit of duct tape won't fix. He could have seriously hurt some pony. And if he wasn't careful with his swing, he might have hurt his friend or even himself. This, this must be what Fair meant. His reckless behavior at home. Is it really all my fault? Have I led him that far astray? I'm afraid I still don't quite fully understand turning. You still came out to a dangerous forest, armed with nothing but that wooden sword. Yeah? And? What if you'd gotten attacked by something, like a wild animal? Or worse, what if your friend had? Come on, Dad. That's why I went with her in the first place. Besides, I'm pretty sure I can take on any creature in this forest. Your training has definitely proven that. Hiya! If nothing else, it would have proven a great way to test my skills. Hey! Maybe you could teach me a few new strikes that only a royal guard would know. My training. Stars above. Fair was right. This is my fault. How do I even begin to confront this issue? Turning page. I... We need to talk about that, actually. Your... Training. Oh. Okay. Um... What about it? It's just... Maybe we should... You know ease up on it for a bit? Ease... up? Right. It's just, well, I know you're still enthusiastic about joining the Royal Guard, but maybe now isn't the best time. W what What do you mean? Look, son, there's... there's a lot going on in the world right now. Crazy stuff. Dangerous stuff. Even with your training, I'm just concerned about your safety, that's all. And your mother and I, well, we think it might be better if you focus on something less risky. For the time being, of course. Though, that would mean you would have to attend school. What? I understand that school is a bit of a sore topic for you, but you do have to attend. But, but what about joining the Royal Guard? I'm not saying you can't, just that you should wait. Learn some patience. Be a little less reckless with yourself. Show some forethought. That sort of thing. Are you saying I'm not ready? <sighs> no, Turning Page. You aren't. Not... Not by a long shot. How can you say that? I, I'm more than ready to join. I... I save ponies and hurt those who want to do bad things. Like Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon, and- But that's my point, Turning Page. You hurt them, yes. But don't you know what that resulted in? 
spoiled rich demanding we pay for the damages you wrought. Had you not been so reckless as to attack those fillies... But they deserved it! That's not for either of us to say, Turning. And even if they did, attacking them has only landed us in a truly dire situation. You can't be this reckless. Not if you want to join the Royal Guard, and certainly not for the rest of your life. That's why I think it would be best if you do start attending school. If nothing else, perhaps the social interaction will teach you how to keep a cool head. What? But... I... What, what about our sparring sessions? D does this mean we can't have them anymore? Uh, I'm afraid not. My job in Canterlot is... about to be even more demanding of my time. I probably won't be able to come home all that often. Much to your mother's disappointment. Your job? But why? How does working in some stuffy place like Canterlot lead to more work for you? I'm sorry, Turning. I can't tell you that. <laughs> I know this comes as a great shock to you, son. But if you simply listen to your mother and start attending school, everything will play out just fine. I promise. I... I... Turning? Are... Are you all right? This has left me truly speechless. This is a grave turn of events, Your Honor. I expect many of us are at a loss for words. Turning you... You must have been in complete shock afterwards. I was. It just happened so fast. I couldn't believe my eyes. I thought he would somehow be fine. It was the poison yeah. joke. He'd gotten infected while looking around Froggy Bottom Bog, and it took effect by the time you had confronted him. Once I'd recovered enough, I levitated him down from the spike to see if I could help him. But he just kept gushing blood. Everywhere. The statue... The ground, it was all covered. I wanted to scream, but my voice just wouldn't come out. And that was when I came rushing back. Honestly, I'm impressed he managed to piece it together so thoroughly, Miss Sykes. I did run off after Royal Order and I fought, and I did come back afterwards. I'm guessing it was the clang that got you to turn back? That's right. The clang. That came from Turning hitting his father with his sword. <laughs> w what the? Turning Page? What happened here? Mom! It, 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 it was an accident. I swear. I just got so angry and. <gasps> Royal? Hey, hang on, honey, just. Oh no. Oh no, 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 no! Mom? Is there anything we can do? N no, he's... He's already gone. No! <laughs> I'll do it. You'll... What? Turn myself in. It's my fault, after all. And... It's the right thing to do. N no Please, just... Listen to me. I'm... I'm so grateful you're alive, Turning. I was worried that... Well, I... You can't turn yourself in! But, Mom... Even if this was an accident, the police won't care. They'll treat it like a murder. And you know what happens to murderers. They're banished from Equestria, no matter who they are! Royal wouldn't want that. 
He wanted you to become a member of the Royal Guard one day. Not- not throw it all away because of- because of some accident! Please, Turning, I- I can't bear to lose you too. But Mom... I did this. D don't I have to pay for it? No, Turning. After all, you didn't do this. Huh? It was... It was the result of an attack by some of the forest creatures. That's what happened here. Nothing else. And here's how we'll make it so. Hold up a second, Miss Devotion. Before you continue, I'd like to ask Sugar Stamp something. Sugar Stamp, the one thing you've been consistent on throughout this trial was that you saw the murder happen with your own eyes. Given what we know now, could you elaborate on that? Y yeah I... I was in the forest that night delivering a letter to Zakora. I meant to fly to her hut right away, but I heard a clang from somewhere in the woods. When I went to investigate, I saw Turning remove his father's body from the statue. I didn't understand what had happened. Not yet. But just as I was about to fly down and ask, that's when Diva showed up. But you didn't leave? No, even though I thought I should. But... I couldn't leave them. Turning looked so scared, and Diva, she looked so broken. I didn't want to interfere with whatever conversation they were having, but I figured I could just watch. And that must be when you overheard the witness's plan. Yeah, it's just as Fair had claimed before, but this time, Turning was the one complicit with it. I didn't want to go through with it, to be honest, but seeing Mom so upset, and remembering what my dad said to me before he... If you simply listen to your mother, everything will play out just fine. I promise. Well, I decided that I couldn't refuse. So, I did as she told me. The first thing I did was move dad's body from the statue over to the crossroads, leaving the armor behind. Mom followed next to me. While he did that, I kept watch, flying from tree to tree. The body... it kept leaking blood everywhere, leaving a trail behind them. We would have continued, but that was when we heard another clang. Coming from the statue. The second clang. The one that Sweetie Belle made in order to scare off the Timberwolves. After we heard that, I told Turning to continue to Froggy Bottom Bog, then rushed back to the statue. Afraid some pony had discovered the scene. When I got to the statue, though, no pony was there. Only the armor and blood were. I see. And that's when you must have moved the blood as well as the armor further into the forest. To the clearing. All in order to suggest the Timberwolves had attacked Royal Order and eaten his body. While Mom was doing that, though, I stopped at the crossroads. I was starting to have second thoughts. I know Dad said I should listen to Mom, but still, lying? It felt horrible, but before I could come to a decision, I heard some pony coming, and that was when Scootaloo crashed into you. Yeah. It took everything I had in me to avoid screaming, but I realized soon after who had hit me. I tried to call out to her. She was already running away, so I ran after her instead. He'd left the body behind, and that was when I decided to try and help out. I flew down to the scene to grab the body and move the scooter. Move the scooter? Yeah, I didn't want Scootaloo to be blamed for Royal's death, so I figured if I could move it, then deliver it to her later, she'd be fine. Huh? You mean... You didn't plant the scooter at the castle ruins? N no I... I lied about that, too. And in actuality, I didn't even get to grab the body before I heard some pony coming and I had to hide in the trees again. Then who brought it there? Who made it so that Scootaloo ended up being blamed for Royal's death? That was me, Princess Twilight. 
What? Turning? How could you? It was an accident. You see, I tried to run after Scootaloo, but lost her. So, I came running back to the body. Once I saw the scooter again, I had made up my mind about what I would do. I didn't want to follow Mom's orders. But I also didn't want to confess immediately. Instead, I tried to frame Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon for the crime. Frame them? Why? Because this was all their fault! If they hadn't bullied and blackmailed the Cutie Mark Crusaders, none of this would have happened! <sighs> More than that, though, there was still the problem of Diamond's mother, Spoiled Rich. She wanted us to pay for those dumb dresses. I figured, if I could get Diamond blamed for the murder, then maybe Mom and I could leverage the truth to get Spoiled Rich to back off. If she did, then I confess. Diamond Tiara would be acquitted, and Mom wouldn't have to pay back a single bit. That was my plan, anyway. And it would have involved teleporting myself to the castle ruins with a body. But I accidentally teleported the scooter and wagon with me, too. Of course, because anything that is in contact with the subject of teleportation will get teleported as well. Sugar Stamp, did you see that happen? I did, but I didn't know where he teleported to, so I couldn't help out in any other way. At that point, I decided I'd just go and deliver Zakora's letter, and maybe talk to Diva later about everything I'd seen. What happened after you teleported, Turning Page? Well, I wanted to remove the scooter and wagon from the scene, but I had to rest for a second before I could teleport again. That was when I heard some pony coming up the stairs from the gorge. Diamond Tiara. Silver Spoon was already chasing after Scootaloo and you at that point. Yep. I couldn't teleport again, so I chose to hide in the trees while she went to check the body. Not long after, Zakora showed up, making Diamond hide too. At that point, I realized it'd be pointless to try and remove the scooter and wagon. Both Zakora and Diamond had seen them, so I figured that I could try and meet up with my mother back at the statue and then tell her about what I did. Turning no! You can't still insist on turning yourself in at the end of this! But what choice do we have, Mom? If I don't, Sopony Innocent will end up being accused! And it doesn't matter if that's either Diamond Tiara or Scootaloo! But we can still make it look like an accident! It's too late for that! Two ponies have already seen the body and the scooter and wagon! Some pony will be blamed for what happened to Dad. The least we can do is ensure that it's me in the end. Because I killed him! The only thing I'm waiting on now is if Diamond Tiara still ends up getting accused. I... Ugh. We'll... We'll discuss this later, Turning Page. For now, go home. And wait for me to return. So you were talking about all of this while at the statue, correct? That's right. Then that means, this was what you heard while you were behind the statue, right, Sweetie Belle? Yeah, when I heard Turning say he killed his dad, I thought... I thought I could use that to help Scootaloo. I thought he confessed immediately to save her. But you didn't, Turning Page? No. Maybe I should have. But I was still holding out hope that Diamond Tiara would be accused at some point. By the time the trial began, though, I realized that wasn't about to happen. And because of that, I was fully prepared to confess to the crime. Th then when that happened... Thank you for fighting so hard for us, Miss Sykes. But this is honestly for the best. You were prepared to throw your chance of freedom away just to save Scootaloo? Yeah, but it didn't matter. After all, you managed to get the both of us acquitted without needing me to confess. I might have been okay with that, but then Sweetie Belle was accused. Another innocent pony was about to take the blame for what I did. I, I couldn't let that happen again. But after the trial, Mom told me that confessing was out of the question. 
Sure, and it's safe, Sweetie Belle. But... Scootaloo's innocence might be questioned by other ponies. I couldn't put her through that. And... by then... Miss Step had already gotten involved as a suspect. Mom told me about Double Jeopardy, and how admitting my guilt would do nothing but hurt Miss Step, who only wanted to save Sweetie and me. I couldn't do that. Not to some pony our family loves so much, and some pony that's been hurt a lot already. Confessing would make her efforts wasted, and knowing that, along with what Scootaloo might have to go through, left me feeling trapped. I didn't know what to do. No matter if I confessed or not, someone would be hurt. All I could do was just follow along with Mom's plan, and hope everyone would be happy by the end. But... Sugar Stamp's role as a suspect... That was orchestrated by you, Fair Devotion. Correct, Miss Sykes. Truthfully, I hadn't planned on getting Sugar involved, but that day, when Turning was arrested... Sh sugar Stamp? What are you doing here? Hi, Tiva. I... I just wanted to check up on you and Turning Page. Oh. Well, thank you. But you're too late. Turning's already been arrested. Y yeah I heard. Um, I... Fair, I want you to know I saw it. Huh? Please don't play dumb with me. We've been friends too long. I saw it, Fair. I saw what happened that night. I saw Turning kill his father. Don't worry, I don't plan on telling any pony. But I wanted to know if there was anything I could do to help out. H help out? I mean, I don't know, Sugar. I'm not sure how you could. I've been racking my brain for a way to get Turning out of this mess. But the only thing I can think of is if I somehow were to take the fall. But if I did that, who'd be able to take care of him? W would you? I, I don't know, Diva. I... I don't want to take turning away from you. Then... I guess... W well, hang on. What if instead of you taking the fall, I did instead? What? You want to take the blame for killing Royal Order? I- I couldn't allow that, Sugar. But please, Diva, think about turning in yourself! If that happened, you both would be safe and happy. And if you two were happy, then I could be too. Even if I would have to be banished from Equestria. Sugar Stamp. So it was decided. Between the two of us, we'd make it so that Sugar Stamp would appear to be the true culprit all along. There were a number of steps we had to take to accomplish that, though. The first was acquiring a motive for Sugar Stamp. After some thinking, I had her return to Canterlot to write a fake love letter to Royal Order. She'd keep it in her home, as well as stay in Canterlot until further notice. The next day, I went to the trial to see how things played out for turning in Scootaloo. I also wanted to learn any more details about the murder, anything that could make Sugar Stamp being the culprit more believable. Even so, I couldn't have anticipated the clone theory you and Princess Twilight presented, Miss Sykes. It was perfect, a clear turning of any suspicion, but there was just one problem. That being, that now there were two murders to account for. Exactly. I realized that for my plan to still work, I'd have to take the blame for one of them. For that to happen, however, I needed help. Private? Ah, uh, yes. I suppose this is where I should explain my own role in this whole affair. Ah, Mr. Votion! How fortunate to have run into you. I must express my immense relief to see that Turning's been acquitted. You must be equally relieved. Hmm. Not quite, Detective I. Please, private is fine. But, why not? What I'm about to tell you doesn't leave the two of us. Can you promise me that? Promise? Very well. I promise I won't tell another soul. Good. The truth is, there aren't any clones involved. 
There's only one death, and that's royal orders. And the pony who killed him was turning page. What? If it is as you say, that turning is guilty, and that it was an accident, we need to do something about that. Now! The warrant for Sweetie Belle's arrest will no doubt soon be issued. We can still stop it, if we move quick enough. What? Why would there be a warrant for Sweetie Belle? Because it was her blood found at the statue, along with royal orders. She was the other pony there on the night of the murder. Then that means... Mr. Vocean, please. There's no way either of us can let that happen. But to stop that... Surely you don't mean I should give up my son for Sweetie's freedom? Well, I mean... Do you really want him to be ostracized from the rest of Equestria for what he did? No, of course not. Turning Page is the son of my friend. But the truth is the truth, isn't it? And I can't stand idly by and let Simpony Innocent be blamed. I have a few ideas. My friend Sugarstamp and I are willing to take the fall for both deaths, but I need you to cooperate with me. We can make it look like one of the fake murders was the result of a lover's quarrel. That'll absolve Sweetie, Turning, and every pony else involved. I... I'm not sure. Please, Private. This will help Turning, and it won't hurt any pony who isn't willing to face the consequences. Don't you think this is what Royal would have wanted? Once he was on my side, I told him what I needed him to do. I'm sure you can figure out the rest, Miss Sykes. You would have asked him to fabricate evidence to implicate Sugar Stamp for one of the faux murders. The one that supposedly happened at the clearing. More than that, you would have wanted evidence to show that the victim had been wearing armor prior to his death, in order to explain the clangs. Yes. And finally, I needed him to create evidence of Royal going to the mirror pool to clone himself in the first place. After Miss Devotion told me her plan, I immediately set about completing what I was assigned. I sealed off the forest, forged the evidence, and met with Sugar Stamp in Cantalot to fill her in. He performed marvelously, to the point where I thought my plan would work. But there was still one more wrinkle left to iron. The anonymous tip. I had to stop whoever had ridden it from talking, since it appeared they knew what had happened that night. I didn't know who it could be until I learned that Sweetie Belle had been at the statue that night. That meant she was the sender. And furthermore, she must have heard the conversation between Turning and me. Realizing that, I went to the detention center to see if I could... change her mind. Change her mind? Sweetie Belle... What does she mean? Right. So, we talked. And we agreed that we wouldn't reveal each other's secrets, so long as the two of us kept quiet. And that was that. Everything was in place. Sugar and I would testify in a manner that would end with Miss Sykes accusing me of the murder. But that wasn't what ended up happening in the slightest. Somehow, everything, everything fell, fell apart. apart. I just don't understand how. Miss Sykes. Athena. I should have been able to fool you. I fooled Private Eye, Princess Luna, but not you. How? How did you see past the lie? Because your emotions told me the truth, Miss Devotion. My... emotions? For how strongly the evidence pointed towards you, your emotions still gave you away. You couldn't hide them, no matter how much you might have wanted to. I see. I have just one more question, Athena, if you would permit me to ask it. Go ahead, Miss Devotion. After everything you've heard, everything you've uncovered, can you honestly say this was worth it all? I found the truth, Miss Devotion. That's worth everything, I should think. I know that, and I agree. 
But what I mean is, if you had simply gone along with how I wanted things to progress, wouldn't things have ended better for all of us? You've torn through so much evidence and testimony, I'll grant you that. But what were you able to save? What made this worth the cost? What made this worth the cost indeed? This case has reminded me of a rather poignant saying from our world. Perhaps you all may have heard of it yourselves. Oh, what a tangled web we weave, when first we practice to deceive. There's another saying to that point, Your Honor. The best laid plans of mice and mares often go awry. Hmm. Indeed they do. Perhaps we should include cases such as these in that saying. What began, despite my reservations, as a clear-cut murder, turned into a complicated display of intrigue and deception. Those we thought guilty were innocent. Those innocent, guilty. In any case, I think we can all agree that this trial has come to an end. For better, or worse, we now know the full extent of what happened that night. As such, I feel I can now hand down a verdict for the defendant's Sweetie Belle. It has been proven that she played no role in Royal Order's death. Any objections? No, Your Honor. None. Very well. I hereby find the defendant, Sweetie Belle. Before we adjourn, though, I have an additional request for the prosecution. Yes, Your Honor? The three ponies who participated in this cover-up, Miss Fair Devotion, Mr. Private Eye, and Miss Sugar Stamp, please see to it that they are taken away to be tried at later dates for their crimes. Understood. It will be done. N no Wait! This isn't fair! Every pony else is being punished for something that I did! Can... Can I give up my double jeopardy thing in exchange for letting them all go? I'm sorry, but no. Double jeopardy is absolute. You cannot be charged and convicted for that crime after having been previously acquitted. No exceptions. But... But that naturally does not apply to other crimes committed. What do you mean? Don't start to lag behind after leading us towards this conclusion, Defense. Not only did Turning Page move the body, thereby tampering with the crime scene, but he has lied several times regarding his movements that night. That's... true. Yes. So while Your Honor is correct in reminding Turning Page of his immunity concerning his father's death, the same cannot be said in relation to his other crimes. No, you can't! I won't let him go to prison after all this! Calm yourself, Miss Devotion. <sighs> I do not intend to lock Turning Page up and throw away the key. So again, calm yourself. I have a solution that will please every pony. You do? What solution? I propose this. That Turning Page, as punishment for the crimes he could be charged with, be enrolled in a boarding school for youths wishing to serve the crown. You mean... like military school? In essence, yes. I believe this will not only teach him proper discipline, but the temperament needed in order to become a royal guard of great esteem. 
I also hope that this ensures a tragedy of this caliber never occurs again. Well, does this satisfy all present? This sounds fine by me, Prosecutor Luna. Same here. The defense has no objections. Agreed. Okay, Princess Luna. I'll accept this as my punishment. It's okay, Mon. I'll work hard. I promise. I'll study as much as I can. So I can be a royal guard Dad would be proud of. So I can be one you'll be proud of. Turning. I'm really going to miss you, Mom. I'm going to miss you more, Turning. You know, it's so typical, isn't it? That right when you'll start going to school, we... We won't even be together. <laughs> Mom? Yes, Turning? I... I... I want you to have this. That's... You... had that back then, didn't you? What is it? It's... a gift. From a really important friend of mine. She gave it to me. To make sure that, no matter what happens, I stay strong. <laughs> so I want you to have it now. But, but turning, you're the one that needs that. Mom, please. It's also supposed to represent the courage one has to do something for some pony they care about. And you did so... so much. Just to protect me. Even though I caused so much trouble for you. <laughs> You've earned this. Thank you, Turning. Oh, Turning. If only there was a way some pony could watch over you. I'm sorry, Diva. I wish I could. I really do. Mm. It's okay, Sugar Stamp. I couldn't possibly ask any more of you after all that's happened. If any pony were to do it, you'd be the one, though. Sorry to interrupt, Miss Devotion. My lord, I would like to make a request, if I may. You may. What is it, Private Eye? I'd like to personally see to it that Sugar Stamp has made Turning Page's legal guardian, for the time being. Her crime was merely perjury, you see. Is this all right? Noble sentiment, Private Eye. But I'm afraid it's not a sentiment you can back up with noble action. Prosecutor Luna, what do you- You know precisely what I mean, Twilight Sparkle. Private Eye may not even have the authority to make such an arrangement, given his involvement in this case. I... Take it you mean my career may be over for good, don't you? I cannot say for certain. There is certainly a chance, however. That... That sounds about right, yes. I understand. Princess Luna, please can't you show Private Eye some leniency? He was being manipulated, after all. Yes, he made it look as if Sugar Stamp was responsible, but he did so under my orders. And Sugar Stamp was in on the whole thing. She knew the consequences. Yes, you all knew the consequences to your actions. That, however, does not absolve any of you. Your fates will be decided at a later date. But... It's all right, Fair. Private! Princess Luna is correct. I knew what I was getting myself into, and while I apologize for what I did, there's one thing I do not regret. Protecting Turning Page. That obviously doesn't help my situation, but I'd like that to be made clear. I stand by attempting to save him, even if things went down a path that Royal Order wouldn't have approved of. His kindness to me is something that can't be repaid. But I can only hope that this, at least, prove to him that I will always be there for those he loved. 
I promise you this. One way or another, Sugar Stamp will take custody of Turning Page. Until the day you two are able to see each other again. And how do you intend on going through with this promise? If you end up with no authority, no position? I know it is a long shot, Princess Luna, but... I have faith there will be a way for it to happen. If not by my hoofs, then some pony else's. Thank you, Mr. Private Eye. You're more than welcome, Turning Page. A tear? Fair? No. Don't cry. Not for me. I am least deserving of your tears. After all you've done, you and Sugar Stamp both. And now with Sugar Stamp to take care of turning. I'll do my best, Diva. I need it. I know I never got to be a great mother like you, but I'll always be there for him. Thank you. Both of you. So much. I don't even know what to say. Just... Thank you. I do believe, then, that that should wrap up everything in this case. Will any further arrangements be required? I if I may, Your Honor, I'd like to have a few final words with my son. Of course, Miss Devotion. So, I guess this is it, Turning. Yeah, I... I guess so. He's beautiful. As beautiful as you. Oh, shush! He's lucky, you know, to have such a wonderful mare for his mother. Are you sure about this, Royal? It feels like only yesterday he even started walking. I mean... Now oh, come on, he's old enough. Right, son? Yeah, I'm a big coat now. It's... <laughs> it's almost funny, and yet also so sad. I didn't realize it until now, but... You've grown up turning. You've grown up so fast. And look at who you've become. Out of everything that I could have ever imagined, ever thought, ever believed, I could not have dreamed that you would turn out to be such a good pony. I wonder, where did you get that from? Heh, <laughs> you've gotten pretty good, Turning. I have a great teacher, you see. But one day, I'll be more than your student. I'll be your partner. Oh? I'll be a member of the Royal Guard in no time, Dad. I'll get to work alongside you. <laughs> I'm looking forward to it. Yes, you are reckless at times. But I know you have a good, pure heart. You are loyal to what you believe in and are willing to do anything you can to protect the ponies you care about. At any cost. Turning page, you are the best parts of us. Of Royal Order, of myself, all rolled up in one amazing pony. I... I am so proud of you. Beyond what even words could allow. No training for a little while, Turning. Duty calls. Oh, again, Dad? Don't worry. We understand, Royal. Just be safe. How about this, Turning? While I'm away, I've got a special assignment for you. A royal guard in training. Hmm? What is it? Make sure your mom is safe, okay? Mom's looked after you all your life. Maybe it's time to show her how much that meant to you. Sure thing, Dad. You can count on me. Don't worry, Mom. That might be gone, but you've still got me. Everything will be fine. 
And if your father were here, I know he'd say the same. That he is proud of you turning page. So, so proud. Mom. I... I... I love you, sweetheart. Please, whatever happens next, never forget that. I... I won't! I promise! I... I love you too, Mom. Then... I guess all that's left is... Yeah... I know. Goodbye, Mom. Goodbye, my son. Court is now adjourned. So, that's that then. It's over, finally. Everything's come to light. Everything's been revealed. And yet... This victory just feels so hollow. Well then, I suppose congratulations are in order. Great job, Athena. You managed to save Sweetie Belle. I... I knew you had it in you. I, yeah, I... Thanks, Twilight. I should feel happy. I mean, I did it. I saved Sweetie Belle like I said I would, but... I can't feel happy. Not with how everything turned out. What Fair Devotion said at the end, about this being worth the cost, I wish I had a better answer to give. Or any answer, really. So, um, what are you going to do now? Huh? What do you mean, Apollo? Athena, you're not going to leave things like this, are you? I mean, a lot of people were hurt by this. Are still hurting. Apollo, it's true that Athena did unearth a lot of pain throughout this case. But she did her job to the best of her abilities. More than that, she found the truth. That's all a lawyer can really hope for. But the fallout, the collateral damage. There's always fallout to finding the truth. It's not comforting, I'll admit. But even so, a lawyer's duty is to the truth. To finding it. To saving it. Like an old friend of mine said, the exposure of truth sometimes results in tragedy. However, it would be an even greater tragedy to avert one's eyes from it. Apollo, you don't think Athena should have accepted Turning's confession during the first trial, do you? Apollo? <sighs> Look, it's just... I can't help but wonder how things would have turned out if... If you had played your hand a bit differently. That's all I'm saying. But if she had done that, she wouldn't have found the whole truth. Lawyers aren't superheroes, Sonata. I get that finding the truth is part of the job. But it's not the whole job itself. Defending our clients... That's what defense attorneys do, remember? I... How can you even say that, Polly? Apollo, if you were in my place, wouldn't you have done the same as me? 
Fight for the truth no matter how much pain it caused, no matter how much it took? Yeah, I probably would have, admittedly. Then? But even so, now I've seen what revealing the truth can do to people. The families it can tear apart. The lives it can ruin. Our actions, even the best intended ones, have consequences. I sort of get what you're saying, but... Athena, trust me. I know better than any that the truth always trumps loyalty. But we have a duty to our clients, a bond with them. And abandoning that duty, shattering that bond in pursuit of the truth, it doesn't strike me as something a lawyer should do. Ugh. Rarity! Sweetie Belle! Hello, every pony. I'm glad to see you're all here. How are you feeling, Sweetie Belle? I... Scooch! What's the matter with you? What were you thinking, Sydney? That stupid shit to the police! Look at what you've done! Scootaloo! I... Wait a second! I was just trying to save you, Scootaloo! Save me? Oh yeah! Thanks for that! It's not like that tip didn't even help me in the slightest! All it did was ruin turning flight for good! You've taken him away from his mom! He would have turned himself in regardless of what I did! Then maybe you shouldn't have tried to do anything in the first place! Scootaloo, darling, please! I know you're upset, but Sweetie Belle really did want to help you! Besides, in the end, she did do the right thing! She told us all what happened. Yeah, but she only did that after she realized she couldn't keep lying anymore. If Sweetie Belle really had cared for Scootaloo, she would have told the cops what she did and what she heard before Scootaloo was put on trial. Surely you have not missed the fact that had she done that, she would have been arrested with both Scootaloo and turning. What difference does that make? She got arrested anyway. This is all your fault, Sweetie Belle! If you hadn't started meddling in everything- My fault?! If any pony's to blame for this, it's you and your cult friend for listening to the blackmail letter! Why were that scooter and wagon so important to you- You know exactly why! Girls, please! Just calm down, alright? We shouldn't be fighting! Not here, not now! Apple Bloom's right, y'all. We really shouldn't be fussing up the place. Really, darling? Would it kill you to take a side for once? I'm on your side, Rarity. And on Rainbows, and Sweetie Bells, and Scootaloos. We all are. But what good is all this fighting, huh? Maybe if you actually fought for Scootaloo, AJ, you'd understand. This is what I mean, Athena. You see what happens when you present the truth without taking into account how you present it? Or how it might hurt those around you? Oh, darn it all. I'm sorry, everyone. I tried, but they just won't listen to reason. It's all right, Applejack. You did your best. Maybe Fluttershy can talk to them separately later? She seems like the kind of pony who'd be good at that. Actually, wait a second. Where is Fluttershy? Uh, well, that's a good question, Dwa. I'm not sure. That's odd. I could have sworn I saw her earlier in the trial. But now she's gone? Looks to be the case, don't it? Sis? What's going on, Applejack? You guys have been acting weird for the last couple of days. Where have you two been, by the way? You disappeared right after the trial, Fluttershy. And Pinky, we haven't seen you since yesterday. And you both look exhausted, which is saying a lot for you, Pinky. Uh, oh, y you think? <laughs> uh, you know how it is, Twy. Every pony's busy these days. That doesn't answer my question, though. 
Is everything all right? More secrets? Your friends sit atop quite the trove of them, it would seem, Princess Twilight. Lockkeeper Equity? What are you doing here? I thought I might find the winning lawyer in this lobby. It appears I was right. Miss Sykes, you have my congratulations for such a hard-fought victory. I... Uh, thank you, Lockkeeper Equity. They say that victory tends to bask oneself in a strange, surreal glow. Yet I sense no such thing emanating from you, Miss Sykes. Was the result not to your satisfaction? It's just... I'm wondering if what I did was the right thing in the end. It absolutely was. No matter what any pony else says about so-called consequences. <laughs> Would you rather the truth remain in hiding? That it sulk in the oppressive shade of inopportune time, waiting for the right moment to appear? That is a dangerous sentiment bordering on naivete, and cowardice too. For by keeping the truth locked away out of fear of what it could bring, you declare to the world that you don't believe in it at all. An unbelieved truth can hurt a pony much more than a lie. It takes great courage to back truth unacceptable to our times. But once it is revealed, we all benefit from it. For we see things for how they are, not how we want them to be. What are you talking about? Is it not obvious? Look to your friends, to the young fillies squabbling. Though it was painful, now that those two know the truth, they're able to see each other for who they truly are, their true natures. And the truth helps us see what was hidden from us, as well, the habits and behaviors we chalk up to mere idiosyncrasies. They are just a pony's mask which the truth burns away, revealing the true feelings and intentions hidden beneath. Wouldn't you agree, Princess Twilight? What? Me? Your friends have been keeping their own secrets. It is not a mere quirk of their character. It is a deliberate act. They are purposefully keeping you in the dark about their activities. Does that not strike you as strange? Does that not strike you as... concerning? I... Even if I admit that it's a little weird they aren't exactly telling me what's up, I still trust them. I know who they are, and I know they must have a good reason for what they're doing. Hmm. There you are again with your blind trust. Let's put that trust to the test, shall we? What? This would have been kept a secret for the time being, but I believe you all would find this information quite relevant. It concerns the matter of a Mr. Overall Concept's death. His death? What about it? The investigation, thanks to a new lead detective, has determined a new suspect involved in his murder. Wait a minute! He wasn't murdered, he committed suicide! So you would like to believe, but that must mean that you, quite simply, were wrong, Mr. Wright. Th th that can't be! I was there during the entire trial! That ain't proof that overall concept killed himself! Speaking of naivete, do you believe your father to be infallible, miss? It's not like that! Lockkeeper Equity, there must be some kind of mistake. All of the evidence showed that- Believe me when I say there has been no mistake. Our detective is quite the thorough fellow, if a bit eccentric in some areas. The fact remains, he unearthed new evidence, revealing a new primary suspect. Who? Hey, who? It wasn't Coco? It wasn't Surrey? Who else? Guard? Yes, Lord Equity? You have new orders. Carry them out to the full letter. Do not delay for a moment. Of course, Lord Equity. What are your orders? You are to arrest the pony suspected of conspiring to murder overall concept. 
Miss Rarity. Rarity? Understood, ma'am. What the? Get your clothes off of me! What is the meaning of this? Me? Your overall concept? The thought of your mind? Rarity! No! I demand to see this so-called evidence that implicates Rarity! Whatever for. You said it yourself. You know your friends. You should need nothing more in order to feel secure in your trust in them. Ah! Rarity! D don't worry! The Right Anything Agency? They'll defend you! They'll get you out of this! They? Goodness me, Princess Twilight. Allocating the charge of your friend and her fate to a bunch of otherworldly strangers, when you yourself are quite capable? I trust them, Equity. That is more than enough to justify this. Oh? Then you, you humans, strangers to this world, tell me, do you trust Twilight and Kind? Of course we do. Even if she were friends with a criminal. Seeing as how Rarity hasn't committed any crimes? Yeah. We do. <sighs> and yet Twilight has seen fit not to tell you why she summoned you to this world. You would trust her despite that glaring lack of trust on her end? But I doubt that is the only sign. I'm sure you have encountered some indication that our dear princess here has not been completely forthright. Am I correct? The discord I heard. Those cyclocs. Ah! No. You guys. At any rate, I have delayed this far enough. Rarity will be booked in the Manhattan Detention Center in the coming days. I suggest you make arrangements. If you truly intend on defending her. This case had pushed me to my absolute limit. It tested my beliefs and my resolve. I thought by the end of it, I'd have emerged fully confident in my abilities. But instead, I faced only more uncertainty than ever before, both because of my actions and because of their consequences. So there we were, rarity taken away, and all of us, hurt, angry, and confused, unsure of what to do next. We each went our separate ways, but unlike last time, it felt like something had changed between all of us. Something that couldn't be undone. Was it because of what Equity said? Or was it because of what I did? I found myself wishing Luna was there. I thought she might provide me with some measure of comfort, but she wasn't. And I wondered why that was. There were so many questions. Not enough time to consider what we could do, and what we could have done. In the end, my actions, my decisions, were my own. I couldn't go back on them, no matter how much I wished I could. But I figured that, as one case began with another pony being put in peril, I could look back at this last one, at those who had been involved, at Scootaloo, Sweetie Belle, Turning Page, and see what I could do to help them going forward.